、えー、ぜひ会場からの質問の時間に移らせていただきたいと思いますじゃあここで一旦、えー、やはりクリスさんに、えー、お伺いしたいと思います一つはこの日米関係でこの半導体をめぐるこの競争というのは目線がちゃんと合っているでしょうかっていうこういう質問と、まあ、2番目はこのジェネレーティブ AI ですねジェネレーティブ AI とこの半導体の関係どういうことが言えるだろうかということとで3番目はこの日本の産業政策をクリスさん自身が評価した場合いいところ悪いところどんなところでしょうかという話でしたいかがでしょうか Well, on the question of the alignment between the US and Japan I, I think I've been struck over the course of my research Uh, by the extent to which the US is learning from Japan、um, on, on these issue areas. I, I think、uh, it's been interesting to watch、uh, the US adopt phrases pioneered in Japan to define its policies on these issue areas.、Uh, Indo Pacific、uh, is, is the best example. No one outside of Japan knows that Indo Pacific was a Japanese invention.、Um, everyone thinks it was invented by the United States,、uh, both in the US and in Europe. Um, and so it's been very clever of Japan, I think, to,、uh, in do, uh, to insert this phrase into US debate. But also, economic security is a phrase、uh, that I think、um, has largely emerged out of Japanese discourse and is now、um, playing a big role in defining how、uh, the US and, and Europe think about、uh, these concepts as, as well. So, in, in some ways, we're all、uh, having these discussions、uh, using concepts that were pioneered. Uh, in Japan. I think you, you're right, though, to suggest that there are certain places where、um, individual firms in Japan and individual firms in the US have disagreements、um, or where they're competing for market share.、Um, but I guess I'm struck by the,、uh, the alignment rather than the, the disagreements.、Um, it does seem like the coordination between the US and Japanese governments on this issue has been、uh, quite impressive、um, and, and straightforward.、Uh, there's Not complete alignment, but、um, the, the, the disagreements have been small relative to the scope of agreement. And I think when you look in particular at the, the companies and the market segments involved, there actually aren't a lot of places where there are companies that are competing directly for market share because the US chip industry and the Japanese chip industry are focused in different segments of the supply chain.、Um, there are some exceptions to that, but、uh, generally speaking, I think that's made. Uh, conversations between the two governments on this topic really quite straightforward.、Um, it, it's different when you look, for example, at the role of Korea,、um, where、uh, Korea has been、um, a much more complex partner, I think, for、uh, the US and Japan to work with for a variety of reasons, but including that there's more head on competition for certain market segments.、Um, on, on generative AI, I think、uh, we've already seen generative AI play a big role in increasing demand for semiconductors. And the fact that NVIDIA、uh, just recently became the world's first trillion dollar semiconductor company is uh, due uh, largely uh, to increase demand for their chips and generative AI. I think、uh, AI demand will drive demand for data center semiconductors for a long time、uh, to come, even if there are ups and downs along the way. I think the more Complex question is what will the impact of generative AI be on how we produce semiconductors?、Um, because just like new AI tools are going to change the, w- the way we write software, semiconductor design is essentially a software progress. There's code you use to design semiconductors. And so I think we should also expect big changes in the design process to come from generative AI tools. And I think this is a good thing for.、Um, Uh, I guess for US firms in particular, since they play the biggest role in both the design tools and the design process, it, it opens the door to a lot of efficiencies.、Uh, but we need to make sure that it's, it's, it's Western companies, not Chinese companies, that are,、um, that are taking the most advantage of this. I see no reason to think that it won't be.、Um, uh, but I, I, I do think we need to make sure that、uh, semiconductor companies across the supply chain are doing the most that they can to take advantage of these tools to、uh, make sure they retain their technological advantages. On、uh, the question of Japanese industrial policy, perhaps I'll, I'll turn that question to my two esteemed、uh, Japanese colleagues、uh, who are probably better placed to comment. So, I'm going to ask you 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 to こうなんていうか世界のまあ半分のシェアを持っていたわけですけれどもそれがまあ今では 10% とまあ衰退していくでまああの
、えーまあ、記憶者ですとか、まああのまあ、今、ラピドスができましたけれども、まあ、いくつもこの、まあ、国が主導して、えー、産業再編等をやってそれでもまあうまくいかなかったという歴史があるかと思います。でこれまでの歴史の失敗と今あと比べるとやっぱり非常に大きな違いは半導体のやはりこの水平分業のこの役割を十分に認識しているというところにあるかと思います。これまでの失敗は、えー、日本のこの半導体がずっとこう縦割りというか、まあ、各社ごとにやっていた。でそれがこう横につながらなかったオールジャパンとはいえうまくそれがこう機能しなかったっていうのが多分一番の失敗のポイントだったと思うんですけれどもそれがこの、えー、今回はですねあのま,まさにこう水平分業のここを狙うんだというこういう意図を持ってやっているというところに私はこの、まあ、ある種の期待というか希望があると思っています。ただあの悪いところっていうか、えー、今、まあ、先ほども言いましたようにこの半導体産業ものすごいやっぱり投資額が必要になりますこれについていけるかどうか、まあ、これを出す覚悟があるかそして先ほどもあのダーパーのところで出てきましたが失敗してもいいっていう覚悟でこの巨,巨額な投資ができるかどうかっていう覚悟がやはりあの問われるところだと思っていてこれはまだ日本の中では十分コンセンサスができてないというところにまあ足っていうか悪いところというか、まあ、これからちょっといろいろ難しいところが出てきそうなそういうあのポイントになるかなというふうに思ってます。ありがとうございました。えー、っとですね、あと一二問短い、えー、質問をそれでははいありがとうございます。あの二つの質問関わり合うところ大きかったと思いますけれども、最初の質問は具体的にこの録音装置を含むスペシフィックなこの技術に関する、えー、規制どうなるのかという話と、今後のそのより後半なですね規制枠組みについてのクリスさんの展望そしてこれ多分ファイナルリマークスなのでぜひクリスさんからもこれから5年10年後のチップウォーというのがどうなっているのかということでファイナルリマークスとしていただければと思いますではお願いします。Well, I think these are actually two helpful questions in illustrating both the specifics but also the principles that, that need to guide export control policy.、Um, You know, for any individual tool, the, the question is not only what is our market share in those tools,、uh, but also what's the impact of restricting it on China and on our firms.、Uh, so there's a balance to be struck in slowing China's progress by limiting access,、uh, but doing so in too broad a fashion risks、uh, reducing revenue for our firms, which are currently selling to China,、uh, and thereby. Um, limiting、uh, their ability to invest further in RD, which is critical to keeping、uh, them ahead. And so I think whether it's、um, not the most advanced, but sort of the second most advanced lithography systems or any of the other tools that are involved in semiconductor manufacturing, that's the balance that、uh, needs to be struck. And I think a lot of the conversations between government and industry over the past、uh, six to nine months have been exactly on understanding、uh, that balance. And, and it's, it's a tricky set of questions because Uh, companies have every incentive to claim that any restrictions will be catastrophic to their business. There was an extraordinary uh, moment uh, about six weeks ago、uh, when the Financial Times interviewed Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, about export controls. And he said that China export controls risk being catastrophic to NVIDIA's business. And so the Financial Times ran the headline. Jensen Huang says export control is catastrophic to his business. And then several hours later, NVIDIA released their Q1 earnings, in which they had the most successful earnings report of any semiconductor in history. And so the Financial Times put a new headline, which is right above the old one, which said NVIDIA reports blockbuster earnings due to generative AI. And so they had these two headlines simultaneously, which I think suggests、um, the The need both to engage with industry but also to understand industry's、uh, incentives. And, and from the perspective of security policymakers, they think in terms of worst case scenarios, that's what their job is, which is absolutely important, but also needs to be balanced against the reality that we need industry that is profitable over the long run.、Um, And, and I think this is a balance that is always going to be complex to strike.、Uh, and it's particularly complex because China will be a critical market for both semiconductor firms and equipment firms, hopefully far into the future. And, and what we want is a situation like the status quo, whereas China feels like its best strategy is to keep buying our equipment 
even though we're only selling them second best goods. That's great. That means that China is funding advances that are going to accrue to our firms. And so I, I think we've been right over the past several years to tighten up some of the controls, but I think we also must be cognizant of the risk of going too far because actually a complete decoupling whereby China stops buying our equipment is a, a worse status quo. It might be inevitable. China wants to go in the direction of having its own separate industry, but we're actually right now in the sweet spot of having China completely reliant on imported equipment and every year spending billions of dollars of funding our advances. So that, that's the balance that we have to uh, keep trying to strike. And I, I think in aggregate, I, I think we're doing a reasonable job in, in striking that balance. はい、あのありがとうございました。あのまだまだ、えー、議論したい、えー、ことはたくさんありますけれども、えー、時間が来て、えー、しまいました。あの本当にこのクリスさんが今回、えー、まあ、開拓されたテーマ、えー、というのは、これからのこの安全保障技術マーケットの結節点を探る、えー、本当に格好の題材ではないかと。いうふうに思います。まあ、こうしてあの日本に来ていただいて、皆さんと議論をする機会が持てたということは、あの大変素晴らしかったというふうに思っておりますし、ますますこれからあのクリスさんの本がえたくさん売れてですね、多くのあの皆さんの議論の土台になるということをえ期待したいと思っています。それではあの本日え講演をいただいたクリスミラーさん、そして沖縄さん、鈴木さんに大きな拍手をお願いいたします。